All right, all right, all right. Here we are, guys. Episode 14 with a very special friend, uh, Golden Bear. You know, this guy, I mean, since day one has uh, supported me and my YouTube career, uh, if you want to call it a career, <laughs> and, uh, you know, from commenting on early videos to, you know, giving me some uh, advice and just definitely uh, showing the love, man. When we when we had the first, uh, you know, after a thousand subscribers and, and there was the, uh, you could monetize YouTube, he was the first king level and he's held that the entire time. And uh, he, he's 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 just a good friend overall. So um, he's been to uh, quite a few of the Pwn Star gaming meetups, and you know a, a big uh, pillar of the Sin community actually. So, but either way, um, I won't ramble on about him. He's here to do that. Uh, but uh, Golden Bear, <laughs> tell 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 us a little bit about yourself, brother. Oh, well, thanks, my man. Uh, well, like you said, uh, you know we've been playing for ooh what. 10 years now, 15 years, I want to say going on. Yeah. Um, you know, since really since Outland started and even before then. Um, but yeah, I, I'm golden bear. Uh, how I got the name golden bear is obviously I'm golden. I'm built like a bear. So it kind of worked out. Um, but no, back in the day we used to, I, I'm a big miner. So, you know, I play this game to craft. I don't play this game to do PVM or PVP or none of that. I play this game to craft, so I'm out in the mines. And if you name yourself back in the day, like you know, brown bear or something, PKs as they run by, they just see you know a brown bear or something. They're going to leave it alone. So yeah. I picked a golden bear, just thinking you know nobody would know the difference. They knew the difference. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that's and, how it started. Man. And your name was Blue, so it was actually probably better to to keep flagging on the wandering healers and stuff, right? So you'd stay gray that way. Looks like a creature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so so before you owe oh, though, man, like what what got you into gaming? Um, and then like what are some of the early games that you played? Dude, oh man, I've been gaming since I was a kid, dude. I yeah. I remember back in the day when you had to put it on channel three and flip uh -huh. the box over to game, you know, so you could play yeah. all your games. Yep, yep. I mean, me and my brother used to barter for I think my first system was like a Nintendo NES and then Super uh -huh. NES and then PlayStation and on and on. Um, you know, some of my favorite games were like Mike Tyson's Punch Out growing up, Castlevania oh. Symphony of the Night. Uh, ooh, dude, there was Castlevania so was games. hard, dude. Castlevania was, it was hard. It was awesome. Yeah. It was hard as hell. Yeah, man. It, um, do you do you ever go back? This is something that I really enjoy doing, like like old Nintendo games that were super hard, right? And you, mm -hmm. you played growing up and you never could be, you got to like a certain level and you thought you got far, but now that you know the game, it you realize you didn't. But I like to go back and like watch speed runs or like playthroughs and see the ending of those games that I played and like sucked at, like Millen Secret Castle and Castlevania, um, Deja Yo, Vu. Do you ever remember Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man? Like, that game? Uh, yeah. Dog, yeah, you never the, made it past the sewer level where you're swimming and shit, right? Yep, that shit was so hard, dude. Yeah, and, and it, like, had the overworld part where you'd get into, like, the, the, the party bus and go... Yeah. yeah. But you had to pick the right route, and if you didn't pick the right route, like, you played the game forever. Yeah. And never beat it. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, man. Like, had I not seen a speed run of that, I would have never known what the ending looked like. Yeah, it it's that's like one of the hardest games out there i think and uh yeah because like you'd you'd get all four turtles and as one would die then you couldn't play them again but i think you could like save them at some point or something i think but, every every level that you beat you got them back but like yeah. you'd have to be very careful how you used them you know uh like yeah. you'd use Raphael real early because he sucked but donatello yeah. you wanted to keep on lock in the back because he had the range on him yeah you know and leonardo yeah for yeah. sure yeah i remember that Raphael's his little size were like shit dude i mean he he would have done better just punching dude or using that's why feet. he's so rude man you <laughs> yeah <know>? yeah <laughs> but but that game was fun it was just hard as hell but i i do that quite a bit with some of those older games man it's just fun to be like i remember playing those and and then wanting to see the ending or whatever but i gotta you know, be honest with you though man like every game 
growing up, like got better and better until I hit UO. Like yeah. my so I went to San Diego Comic Convention 1997 with my cousin, and he got he got an alpha copy of of UO. Okay. Went back to his house, loaded it up. I'm talking like dial up 56k modem, right? And we're walking like, you know, old school UL, one step of frame. <clears throat> and I'll never forget. He just tried to steal from like a shop and end up getting guard whacked. Yeah. And I was like, you can, you can actually steal. Like they won't stop you from doing that. That's an actual mechanic. I, I lost it, dude. I've, I've been hooked on the game ever since, man. So, so you, um, you got an actual hard copy from like a convention, right? Yeah, in well, my cousin did. Yeah, 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 my cousin. Yeah. And then I've, once I, I mean, I tracked the game for like, it didn't, I think it came out the year after. And then like, I tracked the game forever, man. Sure. Wanted to play it so bad. I, I remember using my, my mom's secure ID from her job for her, for dial up. So we get yeah. that free dial up, that good dial up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just so I could play some UO back in the day. Yeah. No, I, I know what you mean about the whole like super slow trotting thing. Um, so, you know, my, my dad always kept like a, a good, decent computer, a good connection. I mean, he had a BBS when I was growing up, like my dad's a techie, uh -huh. right? You know, like yeah, yeah. He's, he's legit. And, um, Beltane, he, we've just wanted to play the game. And so like he had this garbage computer, this garbage internet and like, we would we would play the game, but dude, like we avoided towns. Britannia, no, no, I don't know Britannia like the back of my hand or Britain like the back of my hand because we avoided that shit. Minnick was our <laughs> was our town, and it wasn't because we thought it was cool or anything. It was because no one was ever there, and like it was the least lag. But even so, we had to come into the bank through the back end because if we went through the front. There was six, seven people there, and that was gonna lag our shit out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what uh, what shard were you on? Atlantic. Yeah, we were on okay. Atlantic. Yeah. What okay. about you? I was out at Lake Superior, man. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I, Atlantic was like the the big one, I think, at the time, and then like Chesapeake became like the role playing server, I think, and uh, of course Siege Perilous. I always wanted to play there, but dude, I sucked so bad. <laughs> were, were, were you good like at the early no time? dude i mind yeah. that's all yeah. i did dude i was just out in the in the, in the mines just you know cracking yeah. away i didn't even know what a pk was until i got to like a private server man okay like, you yeah, just knew you were I getting murdered messed with oh really i never okay. got messed with at Shit, all I, I well most of the time like you could stay within the town and mine you know oh. the on the on the old map i should say uh you know you get to that one little break uh, and, and that's where you're outside of, of guard zone in Brit, but you yeah, can okay. literally just like mine the entire circumference of Brit. Yeah. See, I yeah, wouldn't man. know. Cause I was only a minute. I, I couldn't go to Brit. <laughs> so that makes sense. But, uh, <laughs> man, like a good day for us, dude. Like if we made 8,000 gold, we were, we were happy. Like that was a good day. And, uh, dude, I never saw 8,000 gold, man. Like, <laughs> To, for real, dude. Like, I never even knew what a pot was until I got oh. to a private server and started getting rocked and being like, how do I survive this? You know, right. like, I, I, I will say that. Yeah, man. Like, I never actively started using potions until the end of UO Forever. Um, end yeah. of my time at UO Forever. And it was just dumb of me. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but like, you know, the controls for Ultima itself just suck, like setting up and the macros and things like I get it now. But I mean, like back then it was just like, uh, I don't know. It, and so I would always know that I needed to make a macro or a script for something. But I'd just mm -hmm. be like, oh, I'll do it next time. And then I just never would do it. But anyways, dude, that's crazy, man, because like I, I think I played the game for maybe a week and a half before I even knew that I had to yell bank box get my bank box you know or like yeah. vendor buy like i'm yeah. i'm because there, there is no manual for for you all back in the day sure. it's not like you know it came with instructions like no absolutely not you just had to figure it out so to this day it's kind of like that 
You're like you're you're about the same age as me, right? You're like 37. I'm 38. So first of all, the demographic for you own general is incredibly specific, man. Anybody between 84 and like 87, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all grew up yeah. in the same area. Yeah, we yeah. all had the same life experiences. Yeah, so yeah. we're the exact same age. Yeah. I'm 38. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean like, you know, my father's older, right? And, and mm-hmm. there's there is, but I mean, you're 100% right, but so we were like 12, 13 years old back then when the game was out. So it, it definitely was a little bit uh, difficult, I would say. But then, man, now, like, did we see like like this this cable mini thief kid? He He's seven years old, eight years old, and he's a better thief than I am, man. Yeah. Like, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, kids of the day, I, they just are a different level, man. I mean, it's it's all of this, you know, like they are just yep. they they can do it. And it, it took a, that was a skill for us growing up. Right. Like yep. that took a long time for you to to master, like how to get those headshots in Halo or yep. how to, you know, like in this case, steal like this yep. kid just picked it up overnight, man. Yeah. So Crazy so me. so how did your like. We'll say your play style evolved. So, like, obviously, you were like me. You just sucked early on. And then, I guess, free shards kind of got in. But, I mean, was there any, like, stories of retail that you remember or, uh, like, guilds that you were in? Or did you literally just sit in a mine no, chopping away? I mean, your own? so let's be real, man. I mean, like, we all did the same kind of, like, fucked up shit sometimes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, like, I played with a buddy of mine. Um, who lived right down the street and like we used to after school i would go over to his house and like kick his sister off her computer and like we would play because he had dsl and i was still on dial up back in the day right oh man and so um we he had a house right outside right between vesper and minock right okay um like right on that little path right where it like turns a little he had a nice little villa there yeah and we um back in the day you could gate into your house and people would just pop in and they'd be gray right and mm-hmm. so what we would do is we would set up tables in like a, <laughs> a circle right uh, except for like two spots that we would occupy we would gate in the middle and then um we would just gate to like town and, and yeah. people would just walk through just yeah. you know for whatever and two people hitting them with like vent katanas just wiped them immediately. Yeah. And we would just take everything they had. It, it, it got to the point where retail put a patch out where you no longer would like gate into a house that you want a friend at. You, yeah. you would just uh, pop outside or whatever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they targeted us with that one. Um, <laughs> but that's probably my favorite story of retail. Uh, yeah. You know, just doing things like that. Like, I think we got like a. Uh, black um, dye kit one time or something like that. Got, you know, some ridiculous rares. Um, sure. You know, back in those days, like I, I didn't even know how the game worked. I didn't even know what a rare was. Um, you know, but you knew you knew how to tab and and hit somebody until they die. <laughs> exactly right. I yeah. think I had like eighty five swords too. Like I I wasn't even GM yet. Like I I I thought it was an insurmountable task back in the day. It, you know? it was though, man. Like eighty five was an honorable number or whatever. You know, like people would if there was a, if they were a GM, it was like wow. Now it's yeah. just like okay. Good job. You can leave your house now. <laughs> you know, like, it, yeah, it, it, it was cool. Like, I remember, you know, hitting 70. I was like, oh, I'm tough, man. I got I, I'm 70. And you'd look at the title, you know, and it'd say like journeyman uh, master. <laughs> and you're just like, you're like, yes, yeah, I'm a journey. I'm an adept. <laughs> I'm an adept swordsman. And it was like the coolest thing ever, man. And uh, mm-hmm. but like griefing and, and the gating my so my dad would. He had runes to like little one tile islands and he would gate people when they'd say, hey, can I get a gate to shame? <laughs> he'd be like, yeah, sure. And he'd gate to that little one tile island. He'd dispel the gate and they'd just be stuck there because they don't, you know, there's not like room books or anything or there was, but, you know, they didn't you have could do lot. help or something like that. That's, but that's, still, yeah, he. that's what would happen is the only way is they'd have to page a GM and a GM have to get them off there. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I that mean, is hilarious. Dude. Yeah. A, a <laughs> lot of my trolling uh, is my father's fault. 
because <laughs> he was oh, a yeah? troll. Yeah, in all the games, man. He's always just been a troll. It's great. So, well, I mean, that's that's a very valid play style, and it, and it's one of the reasons why I like UO so much is because you know it gives you the opportunity. It's not like it doesn't corral you or into like a linear path, right? Like you yeah. can literally choose whatever you want. Like begging yeah. is a is a viable skill in this game. Like, you know, and, and Outlands specifically did an excellent job of retooling all the skills to make them really viable. Yeah. I mean, you know, detect hidden and and uh tinkering to do traps. Yeah, like, that's cool. Brilliant, man. Absolutely yeah. brilliant, dude. Yeah, you like, know, like I, World of Warcraft, because you're exactly right. Like, you talk linear. You know, um, I play it. I enjoy it for, like, three months straight. And it's, like, so much fun. And then all of a sudden, I hit that end of that linear path. And I'm just like, all right, I'm bored. I'm just kind of logging on because I feel like I need to. But then Outlands specifically, and just Ultima in general, really. But, I mean, Outlands specifically, it's like, well, what kind of trouble am I going to get into today? Do I feel like farming 100K for my chain experience? Do I feel like stealing some shit and causing chaos in the dungeon? Uh, do I feel like uh, grouping up with some friends and murdering some people or trying to take over bosses? Or, you know, like, I mean, there's just, there isn't really that, like, linear thing. And end game is still pretty similar to early game. Like, if, if is, you... Yeah. If you didn't play already and you were like, yeah, I want to start playing with you. I'd be like, all right, cool, man. Like day one, day two, you could be doing the same stuff that I'm doing with the guild. You know what I mean? And like, there's yeah, not many other games you can really do that. And I think that's super cool. Super cool. Yeah, I mean, there's not a huge ramp period. There's not a huge, like, like a lot of games, they'll gatekeep in the sense that, like, you know, once somebody gets to, like, level, like, WoW, for example, level 60 or something like that, like, you're you're owning that game, you know? Yeah. Like, it, there's a huge gap between you and somebody who's level, like, one, mm-hmm. right? It, it's not something that's going to be achieved within a day or two. Now, granted, people have done it within a day or two, but, you know, those people <laughs> are a little crazy. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, whereas UO just kind of, I don't know, it, it is really democratizes, you know, the playing field, if you will. Yeah. Um, which yeah, I appreciate and it, and it, and it, it's one of those things where it's like easy to learn, hard to master. Right. So like, while you can ramp up very quickly, you got cats out here who have templates that are like, I have 62.3 alchemy because that gives me the exact amount of hit point regen that I need in order to take an e-bolt four times. Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, they got the strat down, man. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, you're, you're hundred percent right. And you know, it, it that's kind of cool because it, for the crowd that wants to min max every little detail, then I mean that that's there for it. And then it's also very easily uh, casualable. I don't know if that's a word, but you know what I'm trying to say <laughs> Ca- mm-hmm. it, to be a casual. Um, but uh, and 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 I like that. But t- before we got started on here, man, you 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 pulled a couple things off your wall, and I just want to like go back to that conversation. And it, yeah, is, it, is it possible for you to pull those off once again? The, yeah, the, absolutely, the maps man. and then yeah, because that was so, uh, I got a few things on my wall. I mean, I, I like collecting art, obviously, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Some notable ones, though. I got you know my boy's shoes were right over here. His piece of art that he gave us. Yep. Uh, mine's mine's which, right there. <laughs> I felt so bad, dude, because he uh, he gave it to me uh, initially, and I thought he was handing me like trash to throw away. And I was like, "Yeah, dude, I got you, man." I went to go throw away. He's like, "No, no, 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 no!" Like, hold on, like open it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, dude, my man." Yeah, beautiful artwork. Yeah, he did a great job, man. Well, it's on. It's uh, on like cardboard of like a box wrapper for yeah, yeah. yeah. It's super cool. So for those of you guys at the the last meetup, crush. Yeah, there we go. So like at our last meetup, Shu shows up and he like pulls out this envelope and he gave everybody there one of those. And it was just it was super cool, man. It was real wholesome and everything. And uh, mine's right there. The dragon's covering it up. His is there. And um, I think we all just really loved it. So that's super cool. Yeah, man. Shout out to shoes, man. Thank you for that, dude. Yeah. Um, and then I got the old school uh, Outlands 
one right here, which yeah. I hit a bow and I was like, yo, man, can you uh, get that, that update? But I guess, you know, we got expansion coming here. Uh, what is it? May 13, 18? 18, 18, 18, 18. Yeah. May 18. Yeah. Shout out to, to Alan. And, and hey, to all of them doing all that hard work on the expansion, man. Like, I, I know that they, they recoded uo in the in a classic right so it's on a, it's in an updated language so they're not you know putzing around in like machine code or whatever uo was originally written in but it even like, then like that's a lot C-sharp. of development work i think it was c sharp yeah i think so okay I see something well, but i'm I mean, pretty sure it's c sharp so that's a yeah. confident language but um but yeah, what whatever is- they're working in now, dude, it's hopefully it's it's more it's easier for them to to create stuff. Obviously, I mean they're pumping out content left and right, man. I mean, every single time they do a merch drop, you know, I gotta keep my pixels strong. So <laughs> you know, I uh yeah. I appreciate you guys for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I, and I I'm hoping that there's gonna be a new one of those because I, I wanna I'm gonna get one, man. We're we're about to paint this wall and uh do some cool stuff with it and uh you know i've got this cool dungeon time book and then i got the uh you know the shoes artwork and i want to get one of those but i want to get one of the updated well i kind of want to get one of the older ones too you gotta have both, well right? you know you gotta have the progression baby you know you That's gotta true. have the throwback if That's you got true, the throwback man. yo That's by true. the way i just bought that that uh dungeon time book today dude um the, cool. the i guess special edition the the hardcover copy joint yeah um very excited. Yeah, I love the artwork and it. it almost looks like a, a D&D book on the inside. Yeah. You know, which is yeah. really sick and I'm I'm really looking forward to that dungeon coming out. You know, as a, as a man who admittedly doesn't really play a whole lot and and just so everybody knows unabashedly, I I paid for this. Don't think that that he just gives out these these interviews willy-nilly, okay? I don't I don't meet the playing standard or the con- contribution to the community level that a lot of his prestigious guests uh, have hit, like, you know, Sir Richard Garriott and such. However, uh, I bought this shit. So we call this the Goldie cast. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can't argue with it, I guess. Uh, I mean, you, you, uh, you did. <laughs> so we, we go into the Renaissance fair, right? And w- I'd been talking these like custom moccasins up for like ever a year, actually, because I, I met this yeah. guy in Denver uh, last year and I was like, I got to get me some shoes. And like it was a big thing. Like I, I've been wanting to get new shoes because mine keep falling apart. They're crappy, whatever. And um, I saw that same guy in Texas when we were all there for that meetup. And I was like, oh, there, there's that guy. Hey, man, are you here? You got your booth up here today? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm over here. I said, okay, great. I'll, I'll be by there in a little while. He's like, all right, cool. And I go over there and they're like, it's going to take two years to make them. And I'm like, okay, damn. Well, I don't know. And then you're just like, no, no, you're, no. And you throw your card yeah. down. And I'm Dude, like, you what? You talked about this and shit then, for like two year. days straight, man. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, a full year, but the two days leading up, dude, you want to stop yeah. talking about these shoes, dude. You got to get them. I was ready. I, I, yeah. So appreciate it. Very much. Hey, no doubt, and baby. No you, doubt. You, you, you would have made Plus, it on here anyway. It was a anyway. great way for me to like guilt trip you into, into giving me an interview, you know, number 14 out here. You, you would have uh, made it on here anyway, man. You would have, you know. Hey, but guess what? You started playing a little bit more, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Yeah. You caught me in the wild not too yeah. long ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're always yeah. like, when are you going to let me on? And I'm like, fuck you, dude. You don't even play. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I refresh my houses and I run people on my on my vendor. You know, I make sure it, they it, restock that shit. You but do. other than that. <laughs> you do. You do. I mean, you you play. I, I see you out there every once in a while, but I know what you're oh, saying for right. sure. But th- I think that's something cool, though, about Ultima is that, like, it's it's easy to pick up and put down. And you don't, like, you know, you don't really lose anything by not playing for a week or two. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's yeah. no benchmarks of like oh well he hasn't he doesn't have the right gear so he can't come play with us or anything like that it's all just like yes it can be as casual as it wants like right now man if you hadn't played for the last three years you could log in and we could farm all night together or go murder people all night together wouldn't miss a beat dude and i 
Yeah, that is where it's at, man. It's super. Yeah, you don't have to do like because I know like UO or not UO, but wow. Like if you're not doing all your prelims prior to your to your raids every single week, and you know, go on and getting all your dailies and all that shit done, then like you can't even you're not even on the raid team. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So like here, it's yeah, you can show up, you can show up, have never haven't played the game in two three years, you know. And to your point, just hop right in, like you miss nothing. Now, granted, there are some some cert like again, you know. Shout out to Owen and Luthius and the whole team for constantly making updates to this 30 old wizard game that we all love so much. Um, so there are metas and strats and comps that like you, if you're not up on it, you're not up on it. Like I, I, I remember having this conversation with you about, you're like, do you even run gadget? Like, do you even know what gadget is? You know, you're over here talking about trapping. Have you even seen the revamp to traps? <laughs> You know, and it's like, well, I mean, kind of. <laughs> you you, <laughs> but you then, have yeah. now. You have now. <laughs> you have now. Yeah, yeah. You know. But like, you know, there are certain things that that will evolve, and but like, for the most part, yeah. If you run a, a mage, man, like a mage is a mage is a mage, right? Like, yeah. for the most part. Sure. No, it really is, man. I mean, the core game is it's, is the exact same. Anytime there's a new player, and there a lot of times. You know, if they played UO back in the day, they're like, oh, I can't wait to get back in. It's been 10 years, 15 years, 20 years since I've played UO. I was on Lake Superior or wherever they were. And it's like, then I know that I'm about to get hit with 15 to 20 questions of, are nightmares still a thing? Do people still use <laughs> white worms? Is command armor around? What about a vanquishing halberd? halberd? And it's like, Listen, man, just take everything you know about Ultima Online and forget about it except for the core game itself. Because this is, no, it's been 30 years, bro. Get over it. <laughs> like, it's yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, but, dude. But I in mean, a good way, it, you know? Yeah, well, it evolved. And, you yeah. know, everything that doesn't evolve dies. So, you know. Which, you know, the, the retail servers completely different than they used to be, too. Um, you know, so when it's also kind of funny because a lot of times retail people, they don't like private servers and I get where they're coming from, but at the same time, sure. they're like, they're like, it's not real UO. And I'm like, well, what the fuck version are you playing, bro? Cause it ain't real UO either. If we're going by that standard, I mean, you know, but it is what it is. I think anything that's <laughs> Ultima is Ultima and like creativity in that game space itself, whatever makes the game have people having fun in it and keeps the game going is good and is ultimate in my opinion. I mean, it, it just generally speaking, right? Like I would argue that there's fan fiction out there that rivals the, the, you know, genre that it's, that is doing fiction on, right? Like if you have people who are truly passionate, like we've seen in the team here at, at Outlands, yeah. Like they are going to do a job that rivals that of what they are they are postering this on, right? Yeah. Like like I, I would argue that they've done a better job than than UO in general, purely because they have the passion for it, right? Like yeah. it's yeah. it's not a job. They're not showing up because they have to show up. They're showing up because they want to show up. And I know AWS hosting costs. OK, I know the kind of passion that it's going to require to run something that thousands of people are hitting every single day and using processing power on. Like, if anything, this is a this is something that they're probably going in the hole on, you know, like running it purely out of passion, you know, and, and that's speaks volumes, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think you get a team of passionate people doing what they want, doing what they love. And uh, without corporate signatures of like, get it approved by this and do this. You know what I mean? And it, mm -hmm. one, it moves faster. And two, that creativity just really flows. And um, I mean, it just shows in all the work that gets done, man. And, and you know, the community buy-in is great. They're active in their Discord and uh, with the community. And, you know, not all servers are like that. Some of them just try to hide in the background and ignore feedback, whether it's positive or, or negative and uh, not here though. They, they, they kind of address a lot of that head on. And I think that that's good. They also nip. I mean, there, there should be toxicity in, in a game. That's what creates drama and creates like 
story. Makes it interesting. It makes it interesting, but there's not toxicity where it goes overboard. And when there is, they make sure and nip it in the butt and, and dismiss those people. And and I think they do a pretty good job of that. So community's great and on point, which I think is very important to have a good community without a doubt. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny, man. I was just talking to, uh, to a buddy of mine, uh, Azura the other day, and he was saying, um, about how he, he won a house in the raffle, which I didn't even know people won houses and raffles, but he, he won the house in the raffle and he won it from a whole bunch of people who got banned. And I was like, you know, in recent memory, I can't really think of anybody that Owen has banned. Like, he doesn't really swing the ban hammer a whole lot. But, like, then again, there's not a whole lot of toxicity in our community. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. There is some, but, like, it's very few and very far between. Um, so, like, I was kind of surprised to even hear that somebody got banned. And I think when people do get banned, it's like... They're not, they shouldn't be ever, they should never be surprised. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah. You know, it's like, come on, dude, really? Like just be a normal person in society. Like <laughs> <laughs> be a contributing member of our community, please. Just, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Like there's like some like really stupid, like names sometimes. And it's just like, you know, the other day, some guy got banned for like, a, it was a terrible name. And then he like jumped into general discord and he's like, well, guys, after three years, I got banned because my name was this. Can't believe it. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can. What, what are you what are you trying to do? Like, do you think that general outlands is going to rally with you against Owen because your name was like fucking terrible? <laughs> Like, I don't, it's literally I don't. like clause three of the <laughs> fucking outline guide of like, hey, here's the code of conduct. Don't right. have a shitty name. I mean, yeah. Would you would you make your Zoom name that at a, on a work meeting? Probably not. Don't do it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Fucker three thousand. I mean, yeah. I don't. <laughs> pretty much, man. I don't know. But it was just. Oh, yeah. It's funny. But either way, so. About like free shards and stuff. So tell me, walk me through like you going from retail to free shards. How did you find free shards? And, you know, what were some of the first ones you did? That part's always interesting to me, how people find those. Yeah, dude. So um, so I went from from retail. I took like a break while I went to college and such. Right. Yeah. Um, and I messed around with other games like, wow, when wow first came out, I was I was heavy into it into that for a while didn't really like scratch the itch though right i always felt like i wanted to go back to uo uh and after i got out of college probably my first year out i discovered hybrid and i found out that hey it's it's uo it's free it's available online and it's got like a whole bunch of cool additives that that people in the community have added on to um and i was like that's amazing what other free shards are available out there? And I found a few that like, I don't know. I, I have a tendency of, of making friends. So like, I would like make friends with the devs and stuff and then yeah. be like, Hey, like, is it possible for me to like, I don't know, place a house in the middle of Moongate or of, of Moonglow or something like that. And they'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, let me help you <laughs> out. And be like, Oh, well, that's really tight. It's cool that you can actually do that on like, you know, on free shards, right? Or these, or these community shards, you can, you can have some sort of input. You can, you almost feel like you're part of the community. I think that's what's really drew me in. You know, I felt like I could have some sort of impact yeah. on a game that, that is an MMORPG, right? So we have thousands of people that are playing it, but like my singular impact could be made in it. Like I remember one time I got some, I, I had like, um, I don't know. I got some penguin skin boots, right? Just had okay. them made for me. And I remember people walking around being like, yo, how do you get those penguin skin boots? Be like, yo, don't worry about that one, man. Like, you got to kill a penguin, you know, just find you a penguin. Yeah. And of course, there's no penguins in the game. So you they're know, like, they, there's like a hundred people running around on Ice Island, like a hundred people just got to find the <laughs> penguin. Did you find them penguins? I got one and they're lying, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's that's funny because that's what actually drew me to UOF is the fact that like you could log in. They had a vendor that had a whole bunch of like specialty clothes yeah. and stuff that you could just like buy. Yeah. 
And I was like, hold on, like pay to win. You you're scratching my itch. Like let's, what else you got? Right. Um, and you know, I think I still have like a cave house over on UOF to be honest with you. Yeah. But, um, but like, yeah, the fact that you could just like, I don't know, you could customize yourself to a, to a level that you can't, I've never even seen. Like I, I remember, I remember as a kid having dreams this is no joke, probably a little terrible, but like yeah. I, I would have dreams of having like a, like a full plate suit that was like, like red, like deep red, you know, yeah. with yeah. like some a dope ass cape or something like that and be like, yo, yeah. like I wish that they would make a hue that red. And then guess what? Free shards. They did it. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was like, it was amazing. It was almost like a dream come true. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's what funneled me into the free shards. And then I got, uh, when I was on UOF, I got uh, hooked up with City. Um, and that's where I met, like, Mary Ruthless and Flexi Mexi and mm-hmm. Necky and Toby back in the day and all those guys. And um, I used to, you know, Mary and I used to run the um, the vendors. So check this out. Yeah. Our, our, uh, our entire guild, everybody would have a friend chess on their front door. Right. Yep. Yep. And they, they would go out and farm and, you know, get a whole bunch of items or whatever, whatever they want to sell. They'd put on the friend chest. I curated a list and I still have the, the PowerPoint actually to this day. I curated a list of every single item in the game and what the current rate was that I would upkeep as well as um, like what rate we would pay as a guild out to you, which was typically like. 10% less than what current rate was, right? And then we would mark it up 15% and put it on the on the vendor, mm-hmm. right? And so we would run out to your to your chest. We would like upkeep a spreadsheet of literally everything you have. Like you had one bow that was vanquishing, you had, you know, like one invulnerable helmet. You had one it, and we would mark down your sheet for you and it would automatically tally what your check was. And then I'd write checks for everybody out of the guild and the runners would run them all out to all the, all the different chests. Everybody would get paid. And and then I'd restock the vendor every single day. And we used to make a ridiculous amount of money on this vendor. I mean, we would have like, you know, gators that would gate in. um, And yeah, man, a ridiculous amount of money on this vendor. Yeah. Cause city was was a big guild, man. City was a big guild. It was huge, dude. I mean, yeah. we brought most of it over when we yeah. when we uh, when you all Outland started. Uh, big ups to Dravik if he's listening at all. Uh, he was the one who actually got us interested at all in Outlands. He was the one who because uh, back in the day, if you even joined Outlands Discord, like you had a chance of getting banned from UOF. And I'm not so, surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Right. And yeah. so, uh, so Javik was the brave one to come over and and join the Discord and like scout out the. He was like, yeah, it's like you owe hard mode, man. Like you know, there's no mounts in the in the dungeons, and you know, like yeah. you, <laughs> there's not a lot of the the quality of life. Like you actually have to like click things. Yeah. You know, and um, which back then it's <laughs> funny because like all I remember. You know, those same conversations and like hearing like Outlands this and like you said, Outland, it's like you owe hard mode and no, no mounts in the dungeons and the, and you know, stuff. And I was just like, what? Like, you know, it was just like hard to comprehend and understand and then look at us now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, it's hard to, yeah. it's hard to think otherwise, right? Like, yeah. Mounted combat's weird now. If I if I get caught out in the wild and somebody's fighting me, I'm like, why why do I run so fast? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Dravic scouted it out for us, and then um, we all came we all came over day one, man. I remember chopping wood. All of us built a lumberjack and just yeah. started chopping wood because we found that I guess the tables that you could create with like 50 skill would sell for more than the wood itself. Right. And so like we could we had Mary Ruthless sitting in <laughs> I think it was she was in Prevalia or something, just like cranking out wood. Tables. <laughs> making tables and selling them. Uh so we could get those good house placements, man. And I think yeah. the very first house we got was hers in Cambria. Uh, and then we got mine at the uh, Prevalia Moongate. Yeah. It's still there uh, today, man. Still there today, yes. Uh yeah. 
I, I would argue it's the co-best vendor house on the shard. I'll, 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 <laughs> wow. I'll proceed that with you. This is this is big for you. This is big for you. Uh, you know, you know, it. I, <laughs> I would normally say it's the best because honestly, I don't need to gate. No, uh, you, don't. you know, you know? Yeah, it's the very first house that anybody ever sees when they start the game and they leave shelter. They go to prevail. You're guaranteed. Sure. And it's the house you see. Golden well, Bear Mall. Well, I, when they leave, I mean, I guess if they go through the moon gate, yes. But if they take the boat, they would go from the docks. But yes, you are right. You are First right. of all, who is taking the boat? It's right at the starting shelter. point. It's right at the start point. But Have you ever right. taken the boat with any of your characters? Yes, but you are right. <laughs> Most people will go through the moon gate. No, it's cool. It's like you, you, you just walk onto the plank and it auto teleports you to the other boat at Pavilion Docks. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. First of all, hats off to Owen and, and <laughs> yeah. Luthius. The, the quality of life stuff that they put in here. I mean, yeah. it's almost like it's almost like they play the game themselves. Oh, I know, you right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, so oh. I mean, you were you were one of the founding people of Sin. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I used to be used to be part of the. I mean, back when I had time and before I had children, yep. um, I used to be one of the uh, the I, what do they call it? council or whatever we called it back in the day. Sure. Um, that was until you know the great blow up of uh, Flexi and Dravic. I think that was in what twenty. It was like maybe two years after we started. And then yeah. we all we all left and and uh, went to wrecked. I, I think that's where I met you, right? Was in wrecked, right? Well, we no, I met you in city. We I was in city with you. Um, oh, in city, yeah, way back yeah. in the day. Yeah, but we actually outside of we actually started hanging out in wrecked. Okay, yeah, that right. Makes sense. It was during that time, but I mean, wait, yeah. And then let's see. Derek was the GM of Wrecked, but I also know that there was like it was given to him by whoever I don't know by Arch back in the day, man, Sir Arch. That's right? Yes. Yeah, love me some Arch, man. Uh, oh to this day, man, dude, he's he's a great dude. I uh, uh, he came back for Pietre. a short extent. Do you remember Arch? Peter? Yeah. Oh Peter yeah. Peter. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was on the Pwncast actually. He's yeah, uh, that handsome son of a bitch. He yeah. is. Uh, he is a funny guy, and uh, he will. He, I look. He is a great ally, but I do not trust that guy. <laughs> yo, uh, yo! When he stole everything from Rex, dude, I was like, "That's so Peter." You know, That's you know so what Peter. he did. No, dude, dude. I don't. I don't know if you watched this episode or not, but he actually, dude. I have, this is. Yeah. Well, he he did the. I mean, look, it's shitty, but hats off to him for creativity. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty badass what he did, actually. He actually um, was in GLC, and he disguise-kitted himself uh, and gave a name very similar to one of the officers or one of the co-leaders or something, and he dressed just like them. And he asked the other guy... To uh, he said, "Hey, I messed up on the ownership or something like that. Can you reco-own me?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." And so we reco-owned him. And then the guy logged off, and he just started releasing everything and stole the entire guild house. Oh, it's so good, dude! Yeah, and the fact that you can do that on this game is like it's messed up, but it's also amazing, I know. dude. I, I like, know it's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it really is. That's why I've like, it was such a shitty thing, but it's also like, wow. <laughs> like, yeah. like, 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 I'm just glad that, I don't know. It's just, it's just, wow, is all I can say. Oh, dude, it, it reminds me of the time that Monk, the, the guy Monk with the sword. You know Monk with the sword? Yeah, I, well, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Yo, you want to talk <laughs> about cats who got patience, man. Yeah. So I got sold a murder home by my good friends, uh, Hot Mess in Hollywood. Shout out to them for selling me a murder home. Hollywood out here. Uh, my man makes some enemies, right? And apparently made an enemy of this dude, Monk with the Sword. And this guy marked every single spot in this courtyard, not just on level zero. You know, like the coordinates like 255, 255, zero or whatever, right? He did it on level one, level two, and level three, dude. So, like, I had carpet 
that was raised all the way up. And my man was still able to get in. And he got me while I was decorating for Christmas. So I had. I had Christmas of a every ton year. of items. I mean, Christmas from every year, things that have been discontinued. I had all kinds of stuff on me and I was responding to a work email. I was like, you know, I'm hidden in my house. It's no big deal. Like, you know, I'm in my home. <laughs> I'm responding to a work email. Apparently he had like gated in while hidden, wait till open my door, uh, like sneaked in, did some stealthing, came in, just waited for me to go AFK. And the second that I did, he murked me and took all of my shit, dude. Yep. And like, <laughs> While while that like gave me that pit of the stomach feeling like holy shit like what the fuck just happened like yep. I just got robbed in my own home. At the same time, I was like, holy shit, dude! I just got fucking robbed in my like, bro. The amount <laughs> of patience, the dedication, yeah, like, yeah, respect, my man. I mean, fuck you, but respect. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, holy yeah. shit, dude! I, like, uh, I think it was General Leo of GG. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it was him. Um, he would get in people's courtyards and he would just keep his character just hidden there and he would wait and he would wait. And then eventually somebody would release like their, uh, their storage or their shelf and he would yoink their shelf and recall away. And that was just what he did, man. And like he, he made a video. It's somewhere out there. And again, I'm pretty sure it's general Leo. I could be wrong, but he made a video of him yoinking everybody's shelves. It's like, you know, a good five minute long video of him just yoinking shelves. And it's like, good job, dude. dude. That <laughs> like, is so impressive. I mean, yeah. like, I don't, I don't have the time or the patience for some shit like that. Like, that's why I, I don't do I for certain things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I docs. Like, I don't do I dude. Yeah. People that, that wait there for like hours, hours, hours. Yeah, days to get like one box. <laughs> yeah, and you know, yeah, man, yeah. It's wild. I, it's I wild. can't. I can't. But you know, that's that's the beauty of this community, man. Like people are that dedicated. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But that's I, an indie I, game, I, but I bet you to find. But that level of dedication, that like stalkerish level of dedication, yeah. that like you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. Like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a different breed, my man. Yeah. Like they don't yeah. build that shit no more. No. You know. And but I mean, I guess if you've got like. You know, you, you, you've you got on one monitor over here and it's just sitting there and you're just... But still, it's like you can only do one house at a time. And to wait for someone to release something or catch you at the right opportune moment where he notices you're decorating and you've got shit on you or whatever, like, that's that's literally just sitting there probably days. And sometimes no one logs in, no one moves around, or it's just a quick drop off and move and you're back out, but like to wait for stuff to be releasing and moved around. is like, you're right, man. Cause that's weeks and days of <laughs> staring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do, are these people like private eyes or something like that? Like, cause honestly that's some stakeout shit, right? Yeah. Like you should be a Beverly Hills cop or something like that after that. Cause you, you are out here, dude. Like yeah. you, you, could have a profession in this shit yeah. man like this is a video game you sh you should employ these skills in your life you know like <laughs> yeah yeah it, which you, me man which now you can't you can't stealth in a house i don't even know if you can hide in a house I, you you might be able to hide but i know you can't stealth in someone else's house anymore so listen I'm just glad that they came out with that the rune wipe deed for the houses. Sure. Thank you, Owen. Yeah. I yeah. know that that was probably directly for me, but <laughs> I still very much appreciate you for doing it because uh, that way you're not sold a murder home. You know, that's funny. Good old Hollywood, man. <laughs> Hollywood was streaming there for a minute. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. his beautiful yeah. ass. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he just had a baby, so well, I I guess a year ago. But um, yeah. probably no yeah, more. It's, of funny. That. it's funny how that how that happens, man. You have a kid and you got to take a little break, man. I remember taking two years yeah. off and then coming back and being like, man, the whole landscape's changed. I wonder <laughs> if, it, if anybody even remembers yeah. how, the, how this game is played anymore. You know, no, absolutely not. Got to learn from scratch. <laughs> so, so that's I the mean, beauty of this game. But you you actually streamed for a little bit, too, right? 
I mean, I don't think you streamed so, Ultima, but you've streamed. I've only ever streamed Ultima. Okay, um, all right. I just don't stream a lot. Like, so here's the thing: I don't like PVM. I don't really PVP. Right? Like when I do play, I will PVM. But it's, I mean, let's be real. Uh, I, I'm mostly out here to either buy and sell shit, or I'm out here to do some mining and some crafting. So I don't think anybody would really watch somebody just mine for eight hours. You'd, Maybe. You'd be, yeah, you'd be surprised, man. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Arbor right? streams chopping trees sometimes, and. I remember uh, when Big Business first started on the server, he would just sit there and chop. And he'd just be like, I got to make money, boys. And he'd just be <laughs> chopping all the time. I mean, I think I think in the Ultima community, people are just glad to see people streaming it. And they just like, there's that, there's the streaming viewer community that just like, they just watch. It doesn't matter who's on. They're just watching somebody and they're active in the chat. And, uh, you know, even like new people on outlands or people they haven't seen before they're like who's this guy and you know as long as their mic's working and they don't have like some weird delay on and uh then they're they're pretty well no, they don't even have to have a mic really but you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah, yeah. I, th I think people more so hang out for the streamer and like their personality and, and it meshes well right then well, I mean, that and you got some theatrics nowadays, my man. Like, watching you stream is like watching a variety show. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you <laughs> on, got a little Saturdays, bit of everything yeah. going on, yeah. man. Yeah. And, like, I don't even know if I could keep up in that kind of landscape, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I, I, I got some quips here or there. I could throw a zinger at you. But, like, I'm mostly just going to be hanging out and mining. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. Or, or... King's Fair. I do love streaming some Barrett Affair. Uh, Barrett Affair. Barrett Affair. Yeah, we yo, we should do a little a little collab, man. You, you know, you say it every year. I mean, you every say year. it every year. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, is he coming? Uh, where is he? Is he coming? Uh, Goldie maybe, Bear, maybe. where are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but hey, let me let me say this though. So um, you know, at the beginning of me streaming, like I struggled a lot with the music scene. Like I, I could not, I, I could not get that at the time YouTube was really strict on like copyright stuff. And like, mm -hmm. if you played like five seconds of any song that was already on YouTube, it was like oh, blocked and it was just a struggle. You actually made, I think like 12 songs uh, for me to play on stream you, you what was cool about it is you were like okay so like what kind of music do you want and i was like at the time i was real into watching vikings which really cool me and my girlfriend are watching it again right now and it's fun to like rewatch it this many years later and oh, yeah yeah and uh you know of course my renaissance fair stuff is a viking and i just i'm into that man it is and uh and of course the channel's that way too and so we worked on, I told you some of the instruments that I like, like a didgeridoo and, and, you know, all that stuff. And I mean, you made it, you made some cool, some cool beats and, uh, even like the, the, uh, spell song, which is the crowd favorite, uh, where you, where you sing, you know, Vassor, Flam, Court Poor, and, and you say songs, but tell, tell us about like that, making some of that stuff and uh, just like your musical experience. Cause you're, you're a really musically talented person. I mean, you got a piano right behind you and that's one of, Oh like, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, first of all, thank you. I, I remember when, when you told me you got DMCA strike that one time and I yeah. was like, well, that's bullshit, dude. Like I can make you fucking music. Like I can probably bang you out a few things in like an hour or two. Like, just tell me what you want. And uh, and I remember I made you like two or three songs. And I just made them like loops, right? Like a like a forty five minute loop of like uh, two or three bars, right? Like just here you go, man. Like you can put this on the background, and and then that way you won't get DMCA strike. And then you did a twenty four hour stream, the one and only, nothing but like <laughs> with like three of those songs. That's that's time amount to torture, dude. Like that's what they do at like Guantanamo, man. It's just like blast. <laughs> this shit at you while, while you're stuck on and i was like oh dude yeah. i feel terrible like let me make him an album um and i'll never forget when you were like I, I was like so give me like some topics or something you're like why don't you make a song about the spells and shit and i was like bro 
bro, you're on to something. Like, uh, that's all the lyrics that I need, man. Yeah. And uh and yeah, and we yeah, we got some uh some spins out in Lithuania on that shit, man. Um, yeah. yeah. My man with the with the remix. Zika, yeah. Zika. Yeah, Zika. He came in, he he made the remix, and uh yeah, he made a big I, like you said, it was out on a radio station out there. It's like out what? Lithuania. I remember he asked yeah. me, he was like, Is it okay if I like use your song? And I was like, The fuck do you mean is it okay? <laughs> like, absolutely, dude. Like, have fucking at it. Like, I yeah. I don't know. It's a it's a song about a, a 30 year old wizard game. Like, go for it. Sure. And uh and then he was like, Hey, by the way, uh you you got played last night on the radio <laughs> out here in Lithuania. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, we're out here good. baby yes <laughs> yep. and, then, and then there was the one that uh you know mary helped with with like the the guards yes. of cambria and uh, uh and necky gave me some words oh Neki. by the way mary yeah. i i have a proposition for you mary has provided me with some more words okay. i just talked to her the other day she's got an orc song okay that, okay and it's it's orcish words however I want to do a collab with you, man. Okay. Because I don't know how to pronounce Orcish words, but I know oh, you I got do. it. I got it. Yeah, I got baby. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's do the collab. All right. Yo, I'll, yeah. I'll send the, the track over. Or if you want, you can come here, man. We can record yeah. in the studio, get it done. And yeah, yeah let's let's yeah, do let's that. figure it. Let's figure that out. Let me fly out there and uh, yeah. hang out with you because I got to You've been to my crib. I got to go to your crib now. And always uh, welcome, baby. Yeah. 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 And uh, let's do that, man. That that'd be that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be real cool. Yeah, man. And we could we could um, bring you out to Sleepy Hollows. I'll give you the link so you could throw that in here. But uh, Sleepy yep. Hollows is a badass studio, dude. Uh, that's oh, I right got down it. the street, man. I'm a subscriber to that YouTube channel. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, for yeah, sure, we'll homie. put that in here for sure, man. That's cool. I'd be yes. I'd be uh, honored actually. That'd be cool. So if anybody wants to come check out any of the other musical stuff that I do, um, there it is. But that, I mean, I, I do music mostly as just like a little hobby. I, I got my degree in music back in the day, um, yeah. but now I, I do like IT transformation because, you know, money. Um, but uh, I'm glad that you let me employ my, my long lost talent here for you. Yeah. Um, and I, I very much look forward to making some more music with you, man. I think um, f- for me that that honestly, I mean, I got to give you some major props because that for me was like when this whole streaming thing and and like the channel really I mean, it, it like became real. Like I had already been making videos and stuff and I was really into it and all that. But like it became real and I learned that it like to lean on the community and take, you know, if someone offers to do something artistically, like go with it, man, because they're part of the community for one and two, like most of the time they do really fucking good. Right. And, and that was like when it became real for me of like, I don't know how to explain it, man, but it was just super cool. And, uh, I, I just remember getting that and showing it to so many of my friends, like, look, look, this guy made this music and it's, and I played on stream. It's like made specifically for my stream. And, and he just did it because he's a cool guy. You know, I just thought it was like, so cool, <laughs> man. Like I was pumped and I was showing everybody and they're like, cool deal. Cause you know, no one gets it. Right. You know, like when we, yes. when we like share this game or, or share something that, y- you know what I mean? They're just like, cool, man. That's awesome. Man. Yes. You, could, you can tell they don't give a shit. <laughs> Dude, everybody in my music community that I played those songs for, they're like, yeah, cool song, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. is that some Viking shit that you're doing there? Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. 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 I told yeah. them, I was like, we got spins in Lithuania. They're like, you did what? Like, yeah. with that? <laughs> <laughs> it is what oh, it is, man. man. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny, man, because it actually helped me land another gig. I, I scored a uh, a video game that was supposed to come out and ended up getting shelved, but um, yeah. a video game far north uh, that was like number one wish list for Steam for a while um, until they lost Steam. Um, and you, you yeah, did right. you did uh, actually uh, work? No, um, and it you did actually stream you guys working that right 
I seem to yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you sent it to me in vanilla. Yeah. 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 That was I a good time, that. man. Yeah. It was a really good time. So, I mean, I what, do another one of those. what actually got you into music, though? Oh, man, dude, I've been playing music since I was a, a baby boy, man. I mean, I, I used to, my mom was a jazz singer back in the day, and, you know, she kind of passed that along to me. Um, I mean, I remember playing piano when I was like maybe six or seven years old and really picking it up, really liking it. And, you know, just kind of went from there. Uh, and then when it came time to go to school, I didn't really have a choice whether or not I went to college, just what I wanted to study. And so I was like, well, music it is. Yeah. Um, cause I knew once you get a degree, it doesn't really matter what it's in. Um, yeah. you know, you, it kind of opens doors for you anyway. So I might as well get in something that I enjoy. And uh, glad I did because it, there's a lot about music I still don't understand, but um, but it really helped open my eyes to it. And uh, now at least I'm I don't know it's like a language, man. You know, like you can talk it with people, right? So yeah, um, it's it's I feel like I probably would have been better off learning like Spanish maybe or or German or some shit. But music's pretty good. It's universal. You know, I could talk to most people in it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what so. Duolingo is for, man. You know? Yeah, Duolingo right. Or, or Babel unless, or whatever. Unless that owl is threatening to kill you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yo, speaking of some throwback shit, let me show you this, uh, this little map over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen that. This is that very old school Ultima joint back in the day when you first bought the game. Yeah. And they got the cloth map, man. Yeah, man. And, and we, I, me and Beltane had one and I'm sure my father, I mean, I wonder if he does. My dad's a hoarder. He might actually have it still. I, I don't know. It's probably in an attic somewhere, but. Oh, it, you know, it's funny because like people will post that. You should definitely post that on like Reddit. And it gets upvoted like a thousand times on the UO Reddit. <laughs> and it's just like people will be like, I want to buy it. I want to buy it. Like it's it's that's a legit thing right there, man. I was uh, I've uh, it's in the other room. I've got the old school uh, Lord Blackthorn. Okay. Uh, the video, the, the like, figure, the, the action figure, figure that came out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah where he's yeah. like floating on some like some. What? Uh, what, what? So weird. <laughs> What brought those action figures? They were so random. Like, I mean, I'm not so like random. against it, but it's just like, what What action figure? Where did this come from? And it, it had nothing to do with anything canon in the, in the game at all. Like, he never floated around on a little pylon. He he wasn't like cybernetic at all. You yeah. know, like. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It, it was very weird. <laughs> like, like, it, it's. It, you know, it, it's funny. I mean, we're, you know, like other servers, they make random stuff that's nothing to do with like what Ultima was or is. And then, so really, it might have been a random server that was like, let's make this action figure because it's UO cyberspace. Someone in the comments tell us where these action figures came from. And, yeah, and yeah, I would be yeah, very like, interested. Yeah. You know, next time that you go boating with, with Sir Richard Garriott or whatever it is that you guys do together, ask him, <laughs> like, know. what was the marketing behind this? You know, like, how, how did this come to fruition? Because that, that, that is so left field, dude. Like, it's cyberpunk dystopian Lord Blackthorn. Like, who, who thought that one up? I, I wish me and Garriott went boating. I want to go to his castle, man. That's what I want to do. You know he what? has a, oh, he has on, a back castle. Up. Dude has a castle. Yeah, he has a house that's a castle, bro. Like, of course he would. I I would. Whoa, oh yeah. my god! I'm telling you, man. I I would I would take some land and I would build a freaking cool castle. I'm talking the four pillars, you know, the towers and everything. Courtyard in the middle. Um, yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. dude. Yeah. Dude, when I was a kid, I lived in uh, Ireland for a few years. I went to high school out there. And a buddy of mine, uh, his parents lived in a tower. It wasn't like a castle, but it was a, it was a, like a legit tower, right? Yeah. And like the stairwell like went around the outside of it. And yeah. then his room was just like open. 
and all like a 360 and his like bed was right in the middle of that joint. And I, I just remember thinking like, this is the coolest shit. Like I, you remember gargoyles back in the day? Yes. You yeah. The anime, the cartoon, the cartoon. Yeah. That Macbeth, shit was cool. You remember his, his house, man? Like it was like all fucking like, like new way, but it, it was Gothic. stone tower. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I was like, you're straight Macbeth from, from gargoyles out here, man. And, like that is the tightest shit. That show, um, that show was so cool, dude. <laughs> yes. Oh, dude, throwback, man. You know that they're bringing it back. I had, now that you say that, I, I think I remember somebody telling me that because I had heard something about it here recently. I kind of forgot about it until they brought it up, but it, I remember really loving that show when it would come on. Those were the good days, man, because like you, you would hope that you'd be home when those shows would come on, but like you might know the times that some show up, but you didn't know all of them. And uh, nowadays it's just all Netflix, right. And and Hulu or yeah. whatever it is, but it was, it was really cool. I think it was cooler back then, but also. It was oh no, you're absolutely everything right. Was swinkly. Right. Yeah. Like, like I, I tell my kids all the time. I'm like, you, you don't even know the joy <laughs> of Saturday morning cartoons. Like, I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning because that's when Dragon Ball Z would air. And yep. my brother and I would have our mom wake us up so we could like be up early enough to watch it. And then we had yep. like X-Men back in the day, which they brought back as X-Men 97, which is really tight. You should check that out if you have. Right. Um, like we had uh, the old school Spider-Man back in the day. Uh, oh, dude, there was so many like great awesome cartoons that you had to tune in every single yep. week or else you missed it, yep. you know? And like, you would maybe catch a rerun like three years later or something sure. like that. Yep. You know, like I, I, my kids saw a commercial the other day and they were like, what is this? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't understand. And I'm like, yeah, you spoiled child. <laughs> you just binge whatever you want. Yeah. You know, like, Yep. If only you knew the struggle that we had to go through. Like there was no DVR back in the day. Like no. you had to be there to hit paw or play yeah. and record at the same time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. And and you now it's just like, <clears throat> okay, so, you know, it, most of the time it all gets released at once. Right. But if it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's like every Thursday night. And you know what? If I can't watch it this Thursday, that's fine. I can watch it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or I'll just watch them both next week. Who cares? And um, there was that works great. Convenience is amazing. But there was something there, man, about sitting down with your family Monday night at 630, eating dinner and watching the fucking Waltons. You know, like, <laughs> good night, John boy. Good night, John yeah, boy. <laughs> like, what? boy. Like, what you know about that, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like any of those yes. shows, dude, it was just like, it was something cool about that, you know? And, and again, do I you remember? It, like, hold on. Let me paint yeah. the scene for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Friday night, you're hanging out with your parents. They just ordered pizza. Yeah. Right. You yeah. got UPN 20 lineup with Hercules, Xena. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. And, then, and then you move into TGIF. Yeah. Where you got you got family matters. You got step by step. You know what I mean? You got yeah. all the hits, baby. Yeah. Oh, dude. dude I, yes. I remember I thought I was big time. This was like I was like 18, 19 years old. Right. And so I'm working in that uh, outback. Outback Steakhouse, Ooh, right? And I so we, we, we'd get home at like, you know, 1130 or whatever. And we'd sit down and it was so cool. Like we had me and, and my, my roommates, we had all of our computers lined up, right? And we would just play World of Warcraft. And I had this badass monitor, dude. And it's not cool anymore, but it was back then. <laughs> and it had picture in picture. And like <clears throat> it was a TV monitor, right? So I could hook up my computer to it and in the back would be the pc and then i'd have picture in picture right down here at the bottom where i'm squaring off and we'd all be watching it watching the simpsons on fox and then family guy and then american dad and we'd be just hanging out you know <laughs> it was a great time dude playing world of warcraft yes. on all three and just watching that man it was just 
So first of all, that's a hard flex for for that time period to have oh, yeah. a, a yeah a TV with picture in the picture. Yeah, and you had your your cable hooked up to said TV and your monitor. No, bro. no, that wasn't cable. That was that was pub- it was Fox. So it was it was public television but still you had a coax yeah. hooked up to this thing yeah 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 as yeah. well as an hdmi bro oh yeah i was a i was a badass nerd don't worry dude that's a hard flex that's we, a hard we, flex dude check it out we also now this isn't really a flex on me but we had a guy that would bring over a projector screen and we had a completely empty wall and we'd we'd project halo on there and so yes. you know the whole wall is like you know, one screen, one of the four sections is bigger than any TV of its time. And it was like, oh, my God, dude, we had so much fun playing Halo. Dude, Good time. Halo is where I cut my teeth, my man, like in college. So as you well know, my my name is Pound Cake TKE, right? Yeah. Where'd that you come always, from? Yeah. You always wonder, where does that come from? Right. So yeah. I was in a fraternity. TKE or Tau Kappa Epsilon. Okay. Um, and as it, my nickname was Pound Cake because I'm light and fluffy, it's just kind of my personality. And so they named me Pound Cake. It, I think it's pretty fitting. It, it, although it's ironic because Pound Cake is a butter based dish, it's like one pound of each <laughs> ingredient. So it's a very dense dish. It's not light and fluffy at all, but I don't know, it, neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> But (laughs) so like my fraternity, every single night we would have Halo tournaments. Right. And like, you know, best of the best wins. You got to be on point. And this was like uh, we didn't really mess around a whole lot with matchmaking online. This was around like Xbox. had just came out right when I got to college. Right. The old Duke. And we was playing Halo 2 on that. And then Halo 3 came out and I was about to graduate. But that's when we started doing matchmaking. I found out that I really couldn't play worth a shit because uh, <laughs> I thought I was hot shit. But, you know, <laughs> fucking up the people in my fraternity. But no, 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 no. These 12 year old kids hopping online and waxing my ass and, and then and then cursing me while doing it. Yeah. Like I, it, it completely opened me up to a whole new world of hate. For uh, <laughs> for you know competitive PvP, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, back in the day, man, that's I, that's where I cut my teeth. You get yourself a battle rifle or the old school uh, pistol, the, pistol, the zooming dude. pistol. Man. Pistol's the best gun yeah. in the game ever, dude. It, you could three shot somebody easy, yeah. all day. Yeah. Hang them high, pistols only, dude. That was a fun time. <laughs> or playing VIP, man, where is is uh, headshots only? One headshot, yeah. you're dead. Yes. It was stuff. my jam, dude. <laughs> my jam. Yeah. I don't make games like that no more. I, I, I picked up the Master Chief uh, collection and played it with some of my fraternity brothers um, and like played through all the levels. And it was nostalgia to the nth degree. Sure. Um, but then uh, it, total depression as you come back to the landscape of games nowadays and you're like, uh, <laughs> what you know- are we going to play next? You know what'd be fun is to just start Halo One, do a campaign, me, you, vanilla, whoever, you know, and just like yeah. level one to the very last Halo, like all the way, the campaign, like go up it up, man. Just yes, you know what I'm saying? That'd be fun, dude. We should do that. Yeah, we should do yeah. that. Yeah, I just finished the very last campaign, the the newest campaign that came out, where they made yeah. it like open map and open world and all that with one of my fraternity brothers. That's cool. Um, Amish yeah, is yeah, real dude, big it's... into Halo. Amish is real oh, big okay, into Halo. For real? Yeah, he loves it. What's Halo. up, Amish? Hey, if yeah. you're watching this, Amish, restock your vendor. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> He's I always laughing. get on him about that. He's fine. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right, so speaking of speaking of UO, tell me, Wildlands, couple what like a couple weeks away, man. Three weeks, something like that. So tell me something you're excited about. So I'm excited about two things. Yep. One, I'm excited about this this new dungeon that's coming out. I'm excited. I, I mean, I bought the book to read up on it. So yep. that way, I it's the largest dungeon ever created, right? We're talking the biggest, right? So so like, at the time that we we tested it, this was back in August. So that's 
10 months ago. It was, if you take every dungeon out right now, put it together, it's still bigger than that. And then he told me uh, today, I posted a video of, uh, if you haven't, check it out, but it's cool. Like I read the first part of it and I'm dressed up and there's some footage and stuff. It's really cool. But um, anyways, he told me, he was like, yeah, it's, it's about twice that size now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like double <laughs> what it was since then. Um, there's eight That's levels. That's so Owen though, man. Eight levels. Well, it was Eric. It was Eric, not Owen. It's Eric. Oh, really? Eric Gray. Because yeah. oh, Eric, really? Eric, Eric Owen's Gray did like it the map dude, right? Like Owen's the one that goes crazy on these maps. Yeah, and Eric, dude, he did a great job. And there's some, really? there's some really, really cool lore. I'll spoil a little bit, right? But uh, so. When the gem of immortality, right? You know, you know a little bit about Ultima, mm -hmm. right? of course. Okay. And it breaks, and then the different shards, and of course, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So Outlands is actually, uh, which is Avedon, is actually the gem or the shard that is closest to mundane skull, and so it's emitting off a whole bunch of like extra fell energy slash magic, and that's why Outlands is so wild and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just pretty cool. I thought that was awesome. That was a neat little. Ooh, they said the name and, of it inside of it. I love it. Yep, That's why and, it's so wild. And and you even get to. Uh, I'm sure he might fix this part, but anyways, on there you can see where we're teleporting around, like some of the little platforms, and then we teleport onto mundane skull. Uh, and uh, it's just really cool because in the book it talks about how. It's so massive that it it's swallowing up stars that are surrounding it. And so like you can see little stars uh, under the platforms where the skull Bro. is. It's just it's like it's really cool because that book, it sets the stage for this dungeon. And it it's it really it's 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 made me like way more excited for time <laughs> than than I was before. I'm fired up about this thing, dude. It's so dude, cool. like the 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 yeah. richness of the lore, dude. Like yeah. like this is some Henry Cavill level of dedication to the yeah. lore, my man. Like yeah, uh, yeah it's cool. I love dude. it. It's super fucking cool. Like, I fucking love it, dude. At first yeah. I was like somebody's a big like, you know, um uh what is it is that Zeppelin that no 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 who who wrote time? Uh uh Pink Floyd Pink Floyd. Someone's yeah. a big Pink Floyd fan. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> right? Like it's a great yeah. song. I've played yeah. it a few times. Awesome, but like yeah. Yeah. But no, somebody is is a is a real lore head. I like that. It's like all this time yeah. we've been the closest shard. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Um so when you get that book, you're going to be excited about it and then uh I bet you me and you will be hanging out in dungeon time quite a bit. It's hard. It's, yeah. Uh, it's oh, cool. well, I mean, dude, I can't even do some of the some of the new dungeon like ossuary and we'll not do will be cancer out. level six or whatever it is. Like I can't, I can't even hop into some of that shit, dude. I get murdered immediately. Well, I mean, some of this stuff you gotta, you gotta have like 30 links. You gotta have that level 14, you know, that end game shit, baby. Yeah, just, just, just come hang out with me, man. You ain't gotta have all that. You're all right. Trust me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll start myself a little stealer, a little thief thief. I'll call him a sneaky bear. That's the funnest and, uh, way to play this game. Yeah? And, uh, yeah. I, well, I see. I mean, you've really adopted it as kind of like your major persona. I mean, you you used to do like Poison Necro, and then you did yeah. like the Archer stuff, and then uh, they, you went through like a thousand different templates. You, with your one character and 47,000 Echoes, which is the most un uneconomical way to play this game. Like you get three accounts, okay. you get I have six. five characters <laughs> per account. Yeah, but you only have one chain on the account, and the aspects are on one character. And I actually only have six echoes. I just, <laughs> I just, you only have yeah. six echoes. Yeah, yeah. I just, I have one that's like current template that I'm like playing on stream or have a video for, and then the rest are whatever. Uh, a thief. Doesn't it double in price every time? 
It increases Isn't it like a million gold and two million gold and three million gold and four million or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can use magic wow. essence now. But either way, I mean, dude, it's it's Ultima, man. Like gold, dude. Like I mean, you know how it is. If I can restock, what am I going to use my gold for? I got a boathouse and I got Pone Hollow. What more is there? Ah, so see, that's number two of the reason why I'm excited about um, the new Wildlands expansion is because I don't have a boathouse yet. And I'm about it. that boat life. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. They got, they got some cool... I have to sell my tights in order to buy a boathouse. There's so. some uh, super cool uh, boat, boat, like new boats, uh, like a Viking longship, and uh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's one that's like got all kinds of guns on it dude there, there's some really cool boat updates really cool so boat the updates. boating life in general yeah. is like you, you know those games that you would buy back in the day that were really cool games in general but they had a they had like a, a sub game inside the game that was yeah, just like way better than the game itself and you're like 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 blitz ball and in, in yeah. the old school final fantasy and you're like how like why isn't this its own separate game that's how i feel about boating yeah. And Outlands, man. Like, no, it it's really a, is. It's own little ecosystem, dude. Yeah. And it, so I I used to boat a lot, and I, I don't want to say I... I mean, I use a lot loosely because there's people that <laughs> boat a lot. And then there's me that it's like, I used to boat a lot, and I'm like 20 million. <laughs> and it's like, that's a lot to me, but to some, that's like a fucking week. But anyways... It's like me saying I play a lot, right? Yeah. and But like... <laughs> I, I burned out of it and it just kind of, to me, like it's all blue and it was just boring after a while, but it, it was fun until I got a really good PVM boat and it was just sailing around and seeing the same blue stuff. But I will say what I did like was when sin and SOF and GLC and Irk, I think, well, no, Irk was allied with us and wrecked. I don't, maybe Irk was it, either way. Um, we had that alliance and we would boat like as a group, we'd be sitting in discord and we'd be like ocean sweep. And so we'd all just get in and, you know, take our armada around and start looking for people to sink them all. And that was fun to me. Like that was really fun. That was fun for boating, just sitting in discord talking like me and you are right now, just talking shop. Mm -hmm. And then some, all of a sudden we find somebody, we ping the map and we all swarm there and yep. Sorry. We ganked the shit out of you at 20 V1 and it was fun. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's what it is. But you know, it's funny, man. I, I miss those days, dude, in general. Like we used we used to be in a mean alliance back in the day. You remember the old Sin Alliance where we had like 80 people in our alliance or something like or 80 guilds in our alliance. It was ridiculous. But like we were alliance with like soft and I love funeral yeah. and myth is over yeah. in soft. Like, you know, yeah. I, I hang out in soft chat actually pretty regularly. Um, just you, because they're really cool guys. I am Dan fucking China. All of them are really nice. Yeah. I, I like SOF a lot, man. Funeral. Yeah. He came, he came out to Philly and, uh, yes! it was so cool. That's like, right. I have this super awesome picture and it was like right after the Alliance fell apart too. And so it uh -huh, makes it yeah. even better because he's got like this <laughs> SOF necklace and I've got like this sin shirt on and, you know, I'm just giving him a big old hug and it's just like, what's up? You know, uh, he's was the just, nicest dude, man. Nicest yeah. dude you ever want to meet. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. I miss those days. I, I mean, like, granted, I get it, dude. Like, you know, sure. sin is itself is already like, what, three, four hundred people large, a, dude. Th 300 people. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's a big crazy. guild. We don't do alliances. But at the same time, like they they made a sub guild. It was supposed to be an alt guild for PvP, uh, and it's called P, but now it it actually just kind of became its own thing. And so they're still allied with them, um, and uh, it, it, it's a cool thing. But for the most part, Sin is its own thing, and mm -hmm. Mar Mary has done a tremendous job with it. She really has. I mean, Mary's a people person, yes. dude, and she's Mary's the homie, dude. Yeah, yeah. She's great. She is awesome, dude. Like, hey, you want to talk about just high caliber people yeah. in general that you meet in your life, right? That you're yeah. like, like, Mary and I will be friends forever. Like, yeah. I, I absolutely admire her. I admire what she does. Like, she yeah. puts in some queen pen time shit 
did to run a guild that level. Like I remember when we when we broke apart to create Wrecked, man. Like I got offered the guild lead for sin and i was like nah fuck that noise like i don't like that is way too much time and energy and dedication like i don't have that man like i got a job and kids and a family yeah. and <laughs> yeah. you know like so for her to take that up and then not only that but grow yeah sin to the level right. that it's been like that the recruiting alone dude is like arduous and then you have to make sure that everybody's vetted correctly that everybody you know sure sends their screenshots in that everybody's you know following the rules that it, it, dude, we don't have any thieves or any spies or any whatever like yeah that is a that is a full-time job which which that shit happens still, man. I mean, it is what it is. There's course, gonna be yeah. bad eggs that get in, and you know, deadly whisper. She, she's the one who you you met whisper when you came. Yeah, out. Yeah, she's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, we, we yeah. all had lunch or dinner or wherever at the brewery uh, downtown, and um, I mean, she she keeps all that organized and stuff, and it, it she does good. But man, it you know it, it's to be expected, man. Sometimes people just get in and uh, they do stuff. The other day, somebody stole like a shit ton of links from. Our Omni. It was in the distro channel and they no. went in or in the distro chest and they went in and just yoinked them all. And it's like, damn. But at the same time, it's like, okay, that who matters. Cares? <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> we're going to do another Omni in a little bit and we'll do like five more this week. It'll be okay. You know what I mean? Right? It's like, you it still did your is. hand for nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but it it is what it is. But um, for the most part, you know, but. So it's either way back on people of UO man. Any any yeah. buddy in particular you want to shout out right now that you want to you know talk about anything like that? I know we just talked about Mary and oh and God, whisper. I feel like I've, I've I've tried to give all my shout outs uh, yeah. to all the people that all along said, the way you have said quite a bit. Yeah, so I right. want to elaborate like, on one of them. That's cool too. I almost feel like you should start a drinking game for this one. And every time that I say shout out. Sure. Like take a shot because I'm yeah. pretty sure that could be a viable thing here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, shout out to my boy Vanilla. Yeah. Uh really miss playing with him. Yeah. Really missed him at at the last meetup too. Um, you know, oversleeping that flight will get you, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I that, that was like the worst text I could have got. I remember I got it. Like, so me and me and Christine are, are watching Vikings on the way to Texas. And all of a sudden I see like at the top vanilla and you know, Chris, and then it says, Really sorry to do and I go, Fuck. And she goes, What? <laughs> and I go, hold on. And I paused it and I grabbed it and I'm like, damn. <laughs> Like, I was so upset. I was so upset. I mean, I'm not mad at him by any means. Of course means. not, no. I just was Mad like, I didn't get to see him. Yes, that's it, man. I, like, because, you know, man, like, we're the three musketeers, bro. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, dude. it's, it's you know, and so, um, but we still had a great time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's still active inside the chat, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, sending yeah. out those weird memes, you know, so. <laughs> yes. you know, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So shout out to, uh, oh, also shout out to my girl Myth and, and Wild. Um, you know, I, I tend to follow her uh, to, to different, uh, she's one of my favorite play, people to play with. So I typically follow her to different, you know, like guilds and stuff. She's yeah. the reason why I went to Wrecked. Um, yeah. Well, that and, there was this dude that uh that took over sin that I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh I'm not doing that. So <laughs> so we're going somewhere. And Myth was like, yo, you should come over to Wreck. Um, and then she pulled me back to Sin, ironically. And then she left Sin yeah. again to go to Soft. Yeah. And uh and she was like, You don't have to follow me this time because it was it was like maybe a week or two between the all those moves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I uh I really like playing with her, man. She's no, oh, she's people. awesome, dude. She's fun. She's good to play with. Like she's good at PvP. She's good at PvM. She never just runs. Fun to like never runs. Chill with. No, she never runs because she just likes to thrill, man. It doesn't matter if she's got an antiquity on her. She's like, all right, we we got a red. Let's fight him. Yeah, and it, it and it's just like it is what it is, man. And uh, she just she just cool, man. I've always mm -hmm. really enjoyed seeing like when I would get into. 
you know, wrecked guild chat on the, the, the voice chat and she was in there, I'd always just be like, awesome. Like I, I knew it was going to be a good time if she was there, man. She's just cool. So. Oh yeah. Her and wild too, man. I mean, I, I, I miss play with wild. He's kind of moved on to his, you know, call of duties and whatever. But, uh, but when he does hop on and play, he's, he's always a character, man. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's there's quite a few characters back in the day that we used to play. Like, for example, like Flexi. I don't even know if Flexi still plays. I haven't heard um, from him in a long time. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's <laughs> he has his nuclear moments, but like my man is yeah. is such a great dude and such a a joy to play with. Um, I mean, again, I've been playing with him for like 20 years now. Um, yeah. and we moved from you know two or three different servers, so. You know, shout out to him, Neki. Uh, I'm pretty sure Neki doesn't play anymore, but when he did play, man, um, again, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life, dude. Um, yeah. And he made uh, music. He actually, <laughs> yeah, he provided me with the with the words for. Um, yeah. Uh, ah, shit. What I can't remember the what you named that song, but it's the one that uh, that starts with like "Awaken Once Again." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I can hear him. Yeah, I can hear it yeah, in my yeah. head. So it's unfortunate on like my 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 playlist when I play it on stream, it says Necky song, but then yes, like on YouTube, you it's go. it's different. So I I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> it's on there. I think we we gave it to the community to uh, to name. That was always you know. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the community for doing that. Yeah, getting everybody involved. Uh, but okay, but, uh, so so yeah, if, it's awesome, dude. If. Uh, of Outlands and we'll say Wildlands or whatever, just just Outlands in general. So you get you get an open checkbook and uh, well, I don't want to say that you'll come up with something fucking weird and wild. <laughs> I have an open checkbook, so hold on. <laughs> okay, well, well, watch what well, you either say. Way, either way, so you get you you get to implement one suggestion to Outlands, and they have to do it. What would it be? Like within Ooh, are you reason. Ready for this? Yeah, within reason. That's why I said let me take back the open checkbook thing. We're not rewriting hold on, hold on. this into World of Warcraft or anything like that. So Owen, if you're listening, I know you probably won't do this, but if you are listening, bring back the leaderboard for Prev coins. Bring it back, baby. Let's <laughs> they, let's hey man, let's just all see where everybody stands. You know what I mean? It's like taking off the kimono. Let's let's see. What everybody's got going on, I just, I just want to, I just want to take a look, man, or, or at least like hit me up and like tell me what where I stand and whether or not I need to, to you know, do some more coffee and tips or some shit like that. Because again, I know what AWS costs are. Okay, I know that you guys are are probably putting out more than what you're getting in, and I, I love showing my appreciation for you guys for keeping this shit up and running. Like it's it's one of my favorite things to do is to provide money to Outlands because it keeps this game going, baby. And you know, anybody yeah. else that does that, friend of mine. So bring back the Prevalia scoreboard. It used it used to be a um, an achievement back in the day. Wow, was it? I didn't know that. Yeah. See, I, I I started right after Cavernim release, like right after okay. the Cavernim release. So I I went Natha launch like you cutting tables. And bows. I heard bows. Tables, was another baby. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. What um what other games are you excited about? Uh let's see. What am I playing right now? So Hell Divers. Yeah. I have you have you hopped on Hell Divers too yet? I need to, man. I love Starship Troopers so much, dude. <laughs> I democracy, play. my man. I, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, it's I need to play. a great game. So there's very yeah. few games that I would classify as like a perfect game. Right. Okay. And like what I mean by a perfect game is it's like it's perfectly symmetrical. It fits within itself. All of the mechanics are kind of cylindrical, right? Like it all it all kind of feeds into itself. It's perfectly balanced. It's 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 repeatable normally roguelike you know what i mean and it and it provides still the same level of fun and it's uh, think of uh have you ever played deep rock galactic no for rock and stone it's a game that we will hop on and play okay. sometime but that's another like what i would classify as a perfect game like it's simple it's easy it's got its own little ecosystem 
it's got enough progression for you to play it for a very long time. You could put plenty of hours into it and not feel like it's, it's lost or like you're just phoning it in or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's, it's a very simple mechanic, right? Like it's very, you're a dwarf that's being, you know, shot into a planet and you got to mine it before all the bugs come and kill you and then get the fuck out of there and, and, and hope that you survive. Right. Like okay. it's a very simple mechanic, right? Yeah. But like the way that they employ the game and the, and the way that they allow you to interact with the game is just like, it's, it's not huge and large. It's small, but perfect. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, it gives you just what you need in order to feel kind of satiated with this game. Right. Mm -hmm. Hell divers two is exactly like that. Right. Like the mechanic for you to everything that you do in that game is, is centered around grenades. Right. So like, if I wanted to call in like a, a, a um, uh, I don't know, a fucking gunship to shoot some shit, right? Like I throw a grenade where it is and then that okay. marks my territory. Or like if I wanted to call in reinforcements, if you died, right? Like I could call you back by throwing a grenade and, and all of it is based off like up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, sure. A, B, select, start, right? So like yeah. you have different combinations that you have to do in order to get people or to, you know, activate the different, yeah. Uh, I guess specials that you have, right? And they're all grenade based, which is like a perfect little mechanic, right? It's small, it's simple, it's easy. It doesn't have to be like a thousand different things that you do. It's it's all just kind of like contained within itself. Uh like a like a snake eating its tail, right? Like okay. it's just like perfectly perfectly cylindrical, right? And and yeah, that game is like that. Like you, you're you're here for democracy. There's few places that we need to to liberate because you know liberation is what we do. We got to kill these fucking bugs or these or <laughs> these uh, these damn aliens. The only you know? good bug is a dead bug. The only good bug is a dead bug. Exactly, man. Starship Troopers, fucking. I've heard nothing but good stuff about that game. Oh, honestly. dude, it's so People great. Just love dude, it. I, so I haven't heard a single bad thing about it. So. No, and, and, and like, again, the progression is very easy and like, you don't feel like it's a slog, like you're sitting here yeah. grinding, you know, like you feel like you progress pretty easily through it. Um, it, and it gives you everything that you need to be satiated within game. And yeah. like, that's, in my opinion, there are very few perfect games like that. Like UO isn't even a perfect game. UO has a ton of different tangents that you could go on and oh, you yeah. could go real deep into a fucking rabbit hole that nobody else goes down. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like that's a great game. And I, I appreciate that about UO that I don't appreciate about some of these perfect games, but like a real perfect game is like you, you're on the rails, bro. Like you're, <laughs> you're very much inside this circle. Right. And like, so long as you fit here and you're happy here, you're gravy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Helldivers two really does that well. Yeah. Um, as well as as Deep Rock Galactic, man. Uh, again, another game I've got to get you into, man. I think like, I think I watched somebody stream it. Maybe I'm thinking of Dwarf Miner, though. I don't know, but Deep Rock Galactic. I th I've seen some people. Maybe I've seen your name play it on. You know, on the like yeah. on Discord, it'll show the game like that they're playing a lot of times. I've seen mm -hmm. people playing it before, so I'll, I'll I'll check it out, man. I'll check it out. But I, I probably popped up on Steam or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, but yeah, we got so we it was so okay. So so far, the past hour and a half, we've decided we're going to do the entire Halo campaign, one through whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, Deep Rock Galactic, and Hell Divers, and and else? we're going and Dungeon you Time. You also got it, Dungeon Time, and Dungeon <laughs> Time. Wait, wait, yeah. we got more, man. Oh, you got to okay, come okay, yeah. up and and record the yeah. Orc song. Yeah, without a doubt, right? I can't wait. Yeah, that's going to be good, and. Maybe we ought to like get somebody to like film it and like do a, like a videographer thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, first of all, we have yeah. a videographer at the studio. He's already okay. built in. All right, so perfect. We're, we're all gravy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, number six is we we definitely need to make fun of Vanilla more. Um, so yeah. you know, and, until really we see make him sure again. That he until we see him again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he needs to become the the redheaded stepchild. No. <laughs> aren't we both aren't we both though i mean well, well, what does that make you motherfucker know, what does that make you uh, i don't know the token i guess but okay listen, okay your dad has got some explaining to do because y'all look way too I similar yeah we do. we do you know it's funny because like you know 
anytime there's somebody with a red beard, they're like, is that your brother? But you know what? Me and, me and Vanilla do, we got a lot of similarities, man. It's beyond the red beard. So. Mm-hmm. I, but, I would mistake you guys in a lineup, maybe, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, so I like to ask everybody this, but I mean, like, what, who should be the next person on the podcast? Who should be the next person on the punk? So first of all, let me ask you a question. All right. Have you ever had Owen or Luthius or anybody else from the actual development team on the punk cast? I've, I've asked Owen and he is, he has said no. <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm, I mean, like granted, I you think- will probably have to do something to like change his face. Like maybe do like one of those, um, uh, you know, uh, you could, you could FaceTime. And you could yeah. put like an elephant on your face or some shit. Like there you would go. have to do something like that. Cause I, I get it. Like security opsec yeah. is out here, you know, like make sure you cover your six. Like I get that. But at the same time, like, even if it were like a true, uh, like, uh, tele, well, not even like a telecast, right? Like, a of, uh, a, a pwn cast, right? Like, where you don't have any any pictures at all. We're just listening to your voice. Like I would listen sure. just to hear you uh, do I an think, interview with Owen. For I sure. think with him and the staff, I would. I would bend it and I would. I would just put like a UO background and just let it ride, man. Um, so, I mean, I'd be willing to do that. I mean, it, yeah. So there you go, Owen. Because <laughs> I mean, like, Owen, oh, I... I I'd love to hear about how you thought about this stuff. Like, I know that sure. you got into this through like map making and really being interested in, in building the maps. And that's how like you progressed your love for you. Well, but like, I would love to know like, Hey man, like here's the nuts and bolts of how hard it was for me to start my own server. Like, you know, I, like back in the day, you all used to be very processor heavy, dude. Like I can only imagine being like, hey, man, I need to get like a fucking 35 core piece, you know, CPU in order yeah. to run this shit. Like and I'm hosting it in a cloud or I'm hosting it at my house. Like I will like, say I, that he it, I mean, he he has he's been on Inside Outlands and Valsarel Poor. And so, I, I caught him on so Valsarel Poor. Yeah. And so is Luthius. Luthius has been on, I know for sure, Vosrel Poor. I don't know about Inside Outland. So, I mean, well, he, he's been out there. And, and, and so, like, that information is out there, I will say. But, I mean, I, I want him on here, man. <laughs> I want him yeah. on here. I'll be honest, bro. It sounds but, like you need <laughs> to get your W2 up, my man, because, you know, he's going to these more <laughs> reputable sources in order to give his input. So, you know, <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's who I would love to see, dude. Especially Luthius. I feel like Luthius is an unsung hero. Um, you know, he he puts in a, a lot, and he, uh, uh, albeit rightfully so, stays in in the shadows where you know I would want to be if I were doing a lot of development on something that has you know three thousand active users like UO does. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I would love to hear his story, too. Um, yeah. Hear kind of like what he where he came from. And I mean, like, again, you, to your point, he has been on other, um, you know, uh, what do they call these things? Podcasts. These, but yeah. podcasts. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he's been on another podcast, but I would love to see him on the podcast. That's right. Podcast the best. Yeah. One, anyway, I mean, I, I might. Well, hey, man, you're right. You're out here like like hot ones with these questions, man. You know, like I feel like like you researched me, like you know about well, you do know about me, but you know about me to ask the right questions. So you know, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there, there's a little yeah. thought behind the questions. It is what it is, but you know, but yeah. So I mean, that'd be cool. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, man. Number one so, interview, baby. That's right. So, <laughs> any, any, any final thoughts? Um, any, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I would love to hear what you have in store for your next true growth strategy for the Pwn Star channel. Man, honestly, like, I've just kind of accepted that I just love Ultima Online, man. And and that's what it is, dude. It, it really is. I You know, I, I want to... 
I, I oftentimes say I want to branch out and like play other games and I do it for a little bit. And then I'm just like, I make one video, maybe two. And on the second one, I'm, I just feel like, like I'm working on a manufacturing line and I'm just like pulling as hard as I can to get it out. Mm. And there's no like love to it. And as cliche as that sounds, that's a hundred percent the truth. But when I make a video on Outland specifically, like there is, there's a lot more passion behind it. I actually enjoy the editing process. Um, I enjoy seeing the comments and seeing the same people. And and I get it. I think that's because I've gotten comfortable in my niche, niche and and I like it. And, and that's fine to me. Um, so really, my only actual growth strategy would be just like, you know, putting putting some money into, you know, uh, you know, Google ads for some of the more popular videos and, and like evergreen videos, as I call them, as well as still trickling some into other popular games but i'm not with the expectation of like coming up with a second game to play you know the last two years on twitter i've put like goals for this year right and each one it said like find a second game to make 50 percent of the channel or whatever and i never find it like i i just can't get into it and my time has dwindled down a little bit as far as like how much time I can contribute. Um, I'm traveling for work and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And now I'm doing a short every other day that releases. So contents went up and, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess long story short, kind of just doing the same thing, but maybe putting more ad revenue into some of the evergreen videos and, uh, just really diving deep into UO and riding that wave because I love it. That So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting you say that because as a project manager myself, typically yeah. when, you're, when your time goes down, mm-hmm. that means you need to up your resources or lower your scope. And it sounds like you've increased your scope but kept the same resources. I mean, it's just you that's doing this editing of, of all this stuff. So... No, no, actually, so uh, a guy on Outlands, his name is BD Sum. He's he's started editing a little bit of shorts. I think he's done like four now for us, and uh, he does a pretty good job. It's kind of nice because he understands the game, and, uh, you know, he's just trying to learn how to edit videos and, and things like that. And I mean, he's not cranking out like a, a nonstop amount of content or anything, but he's definitely helping alleviate some of that time for me. And, uh, it, which has been really helpful for sure. So that's awesome. Shout out to yeah. BD one. Is yeah, it BD one or B, B, BD some? Yeah. Bad oh, BD flight. some. Yeah. Yeah. He's cool. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So what's up with the merch game, dude? Because this thing is like, yeah, it's kind of old now, man. You know, it's, so, it's showing us it's years, bro. I need some, some new merch, baby. There, there's a little bit so I can get a Pone Hollow shirt. I know it's your competitor for a, uh, a, a you know vendor mall, but hey, you can get one. That one's probably my favorite. That was made by Lumperoo, actually. He came up okay. with that, um, and he uh, also made a snowdrift. So like when the Tamers got overhauled, snowdrifts were just stupid overpowered. I mean, Tamers are mm-hmm. stupid overpowered right now, but the True. snowdrifts especially were. And so we made like a, a snowdrift. And then it says focuses aggression, and then it has like a snow drift over. It's really a cool shirt. Um, so you know, I need to make a Pwncast T-shirt. Um, I need to get with him because he he makes like shirts. That's like a side gig that he does, and then he's just wants to make like UO shirts uh, for the merch store. And he's like, yeah, whenever you got an idea, send it to me. And so we work together on that. So um, definitely some more merch soon, without a doubt. Probably something oh, yeah. to do with time or something. I don't know. But definitely a podcast one. Well, you know, if you ever want to do any collab merch on any of the, you know, a podcast specifically, man, you know, I got some logos I can send you. We can make some collab shit. Let's you know do it. I'm Let's do it. I'm, hey, I'm like, I, like I said earlier, people want to help out, man. I'm all for it, dude. Trust me. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Hell yeah. Let's get it in, baby. Hell yeah. Well, hey, Golden Bear. I really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. Um, I am very glad that uh, we got to hang out in uh, earlier this month down in Texas. You flew out there. 
Um, I mean, you wine and dined everybody <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we had a wonderful time, man. And, uh, I just, uh, I appreciate everything that you've done for me as a, uh, content creator, as a streamer and, uh, as a friend really. And, uh, yeah, man, um, many more years to come, I'm sure too. So absolutely dude. And thank you for having me, man. Thank you for letting me compromise your integrity by buying this episode. Hashtag Goldie cast, baby. Um, you know, I very much appreciate that dude. And, and thank you for your friendship over the years, man. I mean, you've been a real one for, for a long time, dude. I think I talk to you like every single day, dude. So, you know, yep. like I very much appreciate you and appreciate the love, man. And, and keep making the content for the, for the community, dude. Like, you know, you're really out here doing the Lord's work. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that, dude, but like, I thank you, dude. Like you keep me involved, even on the times where I need to take sabbaticals in order to focus on my mental health or my children or whatever. Like I can always rely on going to your YouTube channel and checking out whatever the new awesome shit that, that Owen and, and Luthius and the rest of the team put out. I can go to you to, to, uh, I mean, you pop up in all my shorts, so it makes it very entertaining on a daily basis or, or, yeah. uh, at least three times a week that I get to see, uh, you know, you fucking with the community out there and, and, the, uh, in <laughs> yeah. the dungeons. So, yeah. Um, yeah, dude, it's awesome, dude. And, and of course, you know, joining you on, on Wednesdays and stuff and getting everybody all hyped up on, on the hype train. That's just fun as hell. That's right. Come Saturday, Um, man. Saturday's where it's at. Whiskey Saturday. Oh, that's why I can get you drunk. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Dude, like I, you've been there, but I mean, dude, like we do, uh, uh, like who wants to be a millionaire at the end of the night? And it's like this trivia question and shit. It's fucking, that's so much fun. That's like my favorite part of it but anyways hell yeah you better tune in baby so you get that answer yep all right bear well well hey man uh everybody else appreciate you guys all watching golden bear thanks for being here phone star gaming 